Dan and I are at Osborne Winery this morning. It's in Kent, it's near Rye, and we are here for an exclusive wine tasting experience, which was a gift from my brother and sister-in-law. So I can't wait to get started, and neither can Dan. as well, several months of quite a big one in those early um, days back in I think sort of the 70s and the 80s, they, they could arrive in several blanc, but it wasn't a particularly interesting grape, it's quite, it sort of adds some freshness and things, but doesn't really have too much character to it, but it just ripened quite well, but um, I think we, we think that Chardonnay um, produces the best quality in terms of a champagne style wine. Um, so yeah, 100% Chardonnay is, is a blend, all the, all the wines you'll be tasting today are a blend of our two sites, so 150 acres here in Kent and 75 acres over in West Sussex towards Goodwood. Um, the 2018 vintage of this won Best in Show at the Decanter Awards, uh, so it's the more sort of prestigious um, wine, I think it's what we do best at Gulfbourne, it's that kind of really useful. This is the first one we've tried, this one is a real hearty sparkling wine, this one is delicious. This one is the Pinot Blanc, and it's more acidic, although it will mature well over the next 10 years. At the moment, it's ideal for drinking alongside, say, creamy seafood or chicken dishes. Mainly even pork. Cheers! But we so the blend is 75% Pinot Blanc, 14% Chardonnay, and 11% Pinot Meunier. In this case, so with the um, the red fruit dominance, or even though it's not pressed on its skin, so you don't get any of that colour, uh, well, it is slightly more golden than the other ones. I guess that's just from the flesh of the fruit, um, but you're still getting those red fruit characteristics. So a little bit of, kind of red, more red apple as opposed to green apple, and then you're getting a sort of hints of summer fruit, perhaps a bit of strawberry, um, blackberry, etc. Um, and then it's just I think it's just slightly richer in style. Pinot Noir tends to give more body to it. Um, and then on the, with the leaves aging on that, it'll uh, give things like toasted nuts um, and uh, yeah, your, your standard brioche and biscuity um, taste as well. Is the Blanc de Noir? This yeah, is the third one we tried. Yeah. 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 Because each bottle probably yeah. has about up to here of a mixture of wine this and the This isn't the quite as sharp as the Blanc de Blanc. Yeah, yeah. The Blanc de Blanc, you would need to have it with food. You can't really have it as a drink. It's just too sharp. This one, you can either drink on its own or it would go really well with either fish or chicken, you could have it with roast pork, but it would also go really well with a nut roast. I would enjoy it with a nut roast anyway, I think that's quite a nice one. You like that one, don't you, Dan? Yeah, yeah you like that one. It's very nice, I'm on strict yeah. rations as I'm driving. Um, this one, I believe, is, I think it's £65 a bottle, which I think is Wine, good value when you think it's been maturing for 30 years. And then you could eat it with the wine you drink. I do like that one. My favourite is still the first one. That's the way you for drinking. You don't have to eat with the first one at all. This one is very versatile though. Because you can either have it as a part of wine or you can have it with food as part of a special meal, for example. Or fine dining. Or just celebrations as well. 
Um, yeah, just you're just Where freezing the neck. So you'll dip the neck into, uh, I guess, it's really nice. nitrous oxide or something, yeah. or something. and they'll yeah. spend 14 days on its skins. And that's what, um, in terms of the fermentation of the base wine, so it, and it's also had, um, it spent time in the barrel as well. So we make a silver rifle, Pinot Noir, um, which will just sell commercially, uh, and then about, so that makes up about 5% of, of the base wine for this uh, one, essentially. So you're getting that slightly more red fruit, summery fruits coming through your strawberries, but then you've also got that freshness of the Chardonnay. Um, and then, then you've also got 36 months on the lees, so it's not kind of a light, Delicate rosé, which can, yeah. can be the star that still fights and um, holds up against the rest, mm. and still quite rich and uh, full bodied. Mm. Um, but yes, an interesting star. So, with uh, the still rosé, it's usually instead of having a blend of red wine, they'll have just less time on the, on the skin, so it could be between four hours to maybe 12 hours, depending on the, the colour. So, you get those kind of quite rich, dark uh, mm. band of roses from the south of France, uh, which is just spent more time on the skins, really. Um, but I think the general style for still rose is a very pale style because people assume it's going to be drier, which I guess it is in a lot of cases, but I don't think you should necessarily base the wine off the colour uh, in terms of a rose. But yeah, this, I think this one has a gorgeous colour. It's almost quite golden, uh, golden, it's mm. rose gold, I guess. Um, mm, beautiful. Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Definitely rose gold. So this is all just from your local vineyards or? Um, so it's a blend, all the, all the ones you're trying is a blend of our um, vineyards. So everything is estate grown. So we have 150 acres here in Kent Perfect. and 75 it's acres in West Sussex. All of the fruit that we put into the uh, waffles all comes from those two vineyard sites. Right. Um, so a lot of it's people um, buy in their grapes appetite. from other vineyards. Um, because I think with English winemaking, we're still it's very nice, got a nice aftertaste. So uh, people kind of have to, yeah, it is nice. Have to which do you like best? Or they have to sell their grapes. Um, or they I like the, the, the first one. And, and I like the third and one. And I like this one. We're very fortunate yeah. to have which everything on site. For? Essentially, I'd probably go for. Uh, you could do a little fermentation. Mm, hard food. choice. It's very tough. Uh, yeah, yeah. All here. Yeah. So the grapes. Forget about the ones. This one I think is forty-five pounds. I'd probably go for this one actually. But just think about. And then they're pressed here. Uh, fermented here, uh, and, and now like, they're bottled here as well. They used to be bottled in our other sites at Anne's Creek, but uh, we've like now got the bottling line here. Price. I'll probably drink this uh, rosé one. I think we need a scorching and aging over an hour. Really? Quite light, actually. It might be actually 55. Um, so it's mm. not 45. I think the... And uh, we've got First harvest coming up, of course, as well. We tend to harvest mid-September. I think this year it's been a bit slow to, to get on with ripening. We had that quite cold yeah. spring and quite cold yeah. beginning to the summer, so that delayed the, uh, the bunch yeah. of tasting we had yesterday nice full glasses as well we could have probably done with one or two snacks as well to help soak up the alcohol but nonetheless it was really enjoyable and we met some fabulous people we came away with two bottles we've got this very lovely rosé which was 55 pounds this is a 2019 vintage And we also came away with this rather nice Brut Reserve and this is a 2020 vintage and this one is so drinkable. And as a thank you to Robert and Lynn for giving the experience, we're going to give them one of these bottles and we hope that they enjoy it as much as we did. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.
please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Bye for now.